know how you can sometimes have, like, ten projects that you really should be working on, but instead you end up distracted by some completely different thing that you just focus on for a little while? This is Lagoon, an obscure action RPG for the Japan-exclusive Sharp X68K computer, which later on was ported to the Super Famicom and then released as an early SNES title in the United States. Uh, this version, however, to my knowledge, has never been localized to English, either officially or by fans. And that is something people have expressed interest in, because there are actually some plot-wise differences in the two versions of the game. So... Here it is with some English text in. Now, this is not a complete translation yet. Uh, I've just gone through the text in the first couple of towns, but most of the actual technical hacking work involved should be accounted for as far as I know. So from here, it should just be a matter of reading and translating. Uh, the reason I got involved in this is because there was some discussion on the Legends of Localization blog a while back that this game and X68K games in general had not gotten a whole lot of attention from the fan translation community, so I took that as an interesting sounding challenge and looked at it a bit. Now, part of the problem there is that, unlike the NES or SNES, there isn't a lot of technical documentation on the system. Uh, what there is is still in Japanese, it hasn't really been translated to the point of usability. On the other hand, at least for purposes of this game, you really don't need that much. Uh, there's not as much work involved in the graphics of the system as there is for the more standard consoles, mainly because the system has its own text rendering, it has its own BIOS containing a full set of glyphs for both half-width and full-width characters in Japanese and Roman. So it's not too hard to get access to a usable set of glyphs for English from that. Uh, also, unlike the cartridge-based systems, all the files involved in the game are just files on a floppy disk. The floppy format's a little unusual, but it's not too hard to manipulate the files as files. That also means that you can extend the size of individual files as you need to to fit more text in if you need to. So. I'm just going to walk around the town here and demonstrate some of the technical features of it. Now, caveats, I'm not that good at Japanese, so don't expect the translations to be entirely accurate. This first town isn't too bad, none of the text was especially complicated, but later on it gets a little worse. Uh, also, none of the text you see here is what I would consider finalized. Uh, I haven't even looked at the enti entirety of the story yet, even, so... I'm not even entirely sure what terminology to use for some things. But... So, there will probably be quite a bit of revision in the game script before I pursue any kind of official release for this. But you can see that I am successfully using a half-width font here, uh, which fits pretty nicely in in place of the full-width Japanese font. Also, the windows are pretty good at resizing dynamically based on additional text. Now, the houses with the portraits here are a little more complicated because the animations on the portrait you see there are actually synchronized with the text speed. So that can mean that the animations look a little unnecessarily fast. I don't have a great way around that yet. There are also a few control codes in the text format that had to be converted to a single byte instead of a double byte, which wasn't too big of a deal, but it took a little bit of hacking work. That really is the bulk of the hacking work in this game, so... With that out of the way, I don't think there are too many other obstacles. And 
and I did also have to change the text parser some because for doing things like laying out the window, it was counting uh, two byte words instead of single bytes. So I had to change the code to count those properly. I have been through this sequence of triggers way too many times. Now the dialogue and the cutscenes for the game are all in these files in this event, as in evento, I assume. So to actually edit the text in there, I had to reverse engineer that format a little bit so I could at least remap the offsets of operations that reference other operations. That was a bit of work, but not too big of a deal. So at this point, I can then insert pretty much however much text I need to into the locations that present text, and it's not too difficult. Uh, you have to make sure that you relocate everything properly so that little cutscenes like that show up correctly. This is actually a mildly interesting one because the game does actually have some control codes for text color that, as mentioned, I did have to remap. But for some reason, they really are not used very much besides this line of text and a couple of others. They kind of underutilized that feature of their text rendering, which makes me suspect they probably use the same text rendering system in other titles the same company worked on. I don't know which ones those would be. But... up, this still seems a little slow, I'm not sure what to do about that. But I do believe, because it's synchronized with the animation, that accurately reflects the way the Japanese text was pretty well. You can hold down the action button to speed up the wandering NPC text, but not the animated ones. Now this next one is a little bit interesting too. You blink and you miss it, but there's this little animation where he holds out a letter to you. Faster than it's supposed to be here. It looks okay, I guess. But yeah, that animation, it is very delicately synchronized to exactly 20 characters worth of text, which is significantly less text in English than it was in Japanese, so the animation has to be correspondingly faster. There's at least one other instance where they do an animation like that that I still haven't figured out a great way to work with. But I'll keep experimenting, I suppose. Sadly, the timing for the animation is not terribly cleanly formatted. It's just embedded in the executable. So it's not quite so easy to move it around or change the length of it. Speaking of which, here's another interesting one. Easy to miss this, but if you use the mayor's letter, there's actually some text you get from that. That text actually happens to be also embedded in the executable. So 
so that's really all I'm going to show off for now. I'll just go through that opening sequence. Right after that, you go straight into the first dungeon, and there's really nothing more interesting that happens there for a while. But there's a good chance I will be making the progress of this publicly viewable on GitHub pretty soon here. And if anyone actually comes in who knows Japanese better than me and decides to actually do the translation, I won't complain too much. But we will see how it goes. I do intend to continue to be working on this for the foreseeable future. But just wanted to demonstrate the progress on here. Maybe there's someone out there on YouTube who will get excited by this project. Anyway, thank you for watching, and good night.